Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is April 27th, 2024. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Virgil Ortiz against Thomas DeLorme. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just first talk about Thomas DeLorme. He fought both Jaron Ennis and Terrence Crawford. He got stopped by both Jaron Ennis and Terrence Crawford. In my favorites folder right now is the Terrence Crawford film. I believe it's important to look at. Right now, you know how Terrence Crawford came out in arguably the biggest fight of his career against an unbeaten Errol Spence. And you remember Crawford coming out against Spence, a lefty. And Crawford, of course, came out left-handed. Right? And you might recall Crawford in that fight throwing an excellent right jab. Right? Outmaneuvering Errol Spence. Uh, keeping Spence from pinning him on the ropes and then dropping Spence early. Spence gets off the canvas. The fight goes a few more rounds, but Crawford was in cruise control at that point. Now, in this film, and it's striking, Delorme is right-handed. At least that's his stance, right? He looks like he has an explosive left hook up front. Delorme has a fair number of knockouts. So what does Terrence Crawford, the southpaw, do? Crawford comes out right-handed. Folks, as I've said here many times, Crawford, <laughs> Terrence Crawford is a different fighter every fight. He comes out right-handed. Is Crawford moving around the ring? No, he's not. Crawford is hanging around the pocket. Crawford, who's throwing some great right jabs against Errol Spence, earlier in his career against Delorme, is relying on that right hand for defense. Right? Delorme is throwing these quick left hooks. And Terrence Crawford, of course, has his right hand ready to block them. Right? Is protecting himself from an orthodox stance. And, of course, Crawford eventually wears down Delorme. Some of the key punches in that fight are straight right hands from Terrence Crawford. Now, it's important in preparing for fights to look at how Crawford fights the fighter. <laughs> because looking at that Crawford-Delorme film, you notice Delorme isn't a short puncher. In other words, he's the kind of guy who can throw an explosive left hook, but he needs a little bit of spacing between the two of you. And that's crucial when you're facing Virgil Ortiz, because understand, Ortiz gets in trouble if you can shorten the punch. So in my favorites folder, I have the highlights from Ortiz's toughest match. Right. Let me point out, by the way, that the guy who gave Ortiz his toughest match is also the guy who gave Terrence Crawford his toughest match. And that's Mean Machine, Ejid Kavalakis. Right. We'll call him Mean Machine here. But understand the genius of Mean Machine. Mean Machine against Virgil Ortiz is able to shorten shots, hit Ortiz with very tough shots, he's able to get Ortiz out of his game as early as the second round. In my opinion, if you can't shorten your shots, if you can't throw big punches from close in, if you don't have that sense of balance and that sense of power, you're going to have problems against Virgil Ortiz, right? In my opinion, Delorme isn't a short puncher. He's going to be throwing leaping left hooks, even though he's in an orthodox stance, 
you're going to see his punches coming. That leads me to believe that Virgil Ortiz, who is the heavy favorite, is going to win this fight by stoppage. Let me point out, too, when you see a young guy like Ortiz, and I made a video years ago where I called him Secretariat. Folks, this is the top of the food chain in terms of, you know, uh, potential, right? This is a Hamza Shiraz type of fighter where you look at him and you think to yourself, he's going to be champion where you look at him and you think to yourself, and this applies to both guys, right, Ortiz and Shiraz, not whether they have among the best jabs of young fighters in the game. No, the conversation's different. You look at their jab and you think, wow, is this the best jab in the game? Right, understand I talked about Ortiz before he had health problems. Right? Ortiz's biggest opponent so far has been his health. He's had to cancel some fights. Right? He's now gained weight. I believe his health was hurt by the fact that he was draining his body of weight. But just understand how much Ortiz has delivered on the promise. Folks, he's fought 20 times. He has 20 KOs. This is the guy, by the way, who you see him and you notice he's attentive to defense. He's above average defensively. He keeps his hands high. This is a slugger who you see him in the early rounds. And you think to yourself, wow, this guy has never had to go the distance in a fight. But yet, even with the 100% KO ratio, the guy is much better, I mean much better, defensively than Thomas DeLorme, right? So let's take a step back here. Jaron Ennis, you heard me mention his name. He's the best at 147, folks, right? The best. I would take him over Ryan Garcia, who, by the way, beat Virgil Ortiz in the amateurs. Be aware of that. I don't believe a fight in the pros would be close. I would take Ortiz because Ortiz, believe it or not, hits as hard as Ryan Garcia, has the much better jab, and has the much better defense, right? He's also fighting at 154. So, Boots signed with Matchroom, Eddie Hearns Group, excellent decision. Eddie Hearns, one of the top promoters in the game, no question about that, right? So Boots then gave an interview where he talked about how he would be the toughest opponent for Terrence Crawford. And of course, Eddie Hearn gave an interview where he talked about how he would like to match Terrence Crawford against Boots Ennis. Understand too, Saudi Arabia wants to match Terrence Crawford against Boots Ennis. Folks, that fight's never going to happen. Crawford was already undisputed at 147. There's nowhere else to go for Crawford at 147. So Crawford now has ventured up to 154. Understand, if Crawford wins his next fight, and let's be clear here, Crawford's, Crawford's won every fight he's been in as a pro. He's unbeaten, right? I believe Crawford is 40-0. and 0. Double check me on that. If Crawford wins his next fight, He's going to fight the winner of Tim Zhu against Virgil Ortiz. Folks, those guys at 154, both with punches, those guys are going to be, the winner of that fight is going to be Terrence Crawford's toughest opponent to date. Right? We here in boxing get caught up by glamour, we hear about Crawford, Errol Spence, and we say, oh, that's a great fight, and stuff like that. Pay attention to the weights. Folks, Crawford has left 147. He's now at 154. Think about it from Crawford's perspective. Undisputed at 140. Undisputed at 147. 
why is Crawford, who has made a lot of money, still in the game? It's because he wants to be undisputed at 154. I believe the only name that could lure Crawford out of 154 right now in his mission to be undisputed is Canelo. Right? And understand, if I'm Canelo, I'm already a first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm fighting unbeaten Jaime Munguia, right? If I'm thinking of leaving the sport, and Lord knows a lot of guys at Canelo's age with Canelo's accomplishments, right? Think Andre Ward. Think Marvelous Marvin Hagler, right? Guys who, you know, you understood, okay, this guy's a Hall of Famer. This is during his career. A lot of guys with that level of accomplishment will say, okay, look, I have kids, I have a wife, I want to tour the world while I'm still a young man and not do it where I have a fight that I need to train for, right? I want to actually visit these towns as a tourist, not as a guy in the main event. If Canelo were to announce, hey, look, I'm walking away from the game, um, I only have one fight left. I could easily see him deciding to fight Terence Crawford. Understand Crawford's skills transcend weight. Right? This is the guy who, because of his mental approach to the game, because a lot of what Crawford does is skill-based, not reflex-based. Right? I believe a Crawford, who has better legs than Canelo, would give Canelo a huge fight. That would be a fight between two of the very best of their generation. Let's be clear too. Canelo is younger than Terence Crawford. Be aware of that. Right? So Crawford has to realize, hey, I don't have all the time left in the world to fight the greats. Now is the time for me to do that. The problem is, what does anyone at 147 hold for Crawford? The problem, too, is Saudi Arabia might be paying out huge paydays, right? But what do you do to the man who already has more money than 95% of the people in boxing, right? Crawford is going to make a mint, whether he fights the winner of Tim Zhu against Virgil Ortiz whether he fights Canelo or whether he fights Jaron Ennis, right? Just food for thought. Well, here, understand, I believe Virgil Ortiz would be a tougher opponent for Terrence Crawford than Boots Ennis, right? I believe Ortiz has one of boxing's best jabs. I believe his defense is surprisingly good. Let me say, though, that I do believe the blueprint on how to get him in trouble is on film. And it's the film of the Mean Machine fight. Right? Look at how Kavalakis shortens the punch. Right? Will throw a straight right hand, is able to rough up Ortiz from in the pocket early. Let me say, too, that. Ortiz is interesting because Hamza Shiraz is actually a southpaw throwing a left-handed jab. That's his dominant hand up front. Ortiz strikes me, and I don't have personal knowledge, but he strikes me as a righty who's throwing a dangerous left-handed jab. Right? And, of course, Ortiz, pound for pound. If you don't know this, you need to figure it out. Pound for pound, Ortiz is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. So, given the odds for this fight, and Vegas loves him a little bit too much, right? Mean Machine should not be an 18 to 1 underdog against anybody, right? Whether that's Crawford, whether that's Jaron Ennis, he should never be an 18 to 1 underdog. He was against Virgil Ortiz because I believe there are gamblers out there who, like me, who realized that Ortiz is one of the best prospects in boxing. As I said, the real concern with him 
is his health condition. Right? As I've said before, he had to have some fights canceled. Right? He has some kind of autoimmune problem. But just understand, we're about to have a ridiculously great set of fights at 154. Right? It's, it's just off the page. Crawford's about to fight unbeaten Madrimov. The winner of that fight is going to fight the winner of Tim Zhu against Virgil Ortiz. Right, folks, you need to know about those fights. Let me just say, to get there, Virgil Ortiz has to win here against Thomas Delorme. Because Delorme is a bit predictable, because he doesn't throw short punches, he's not a Joe Lewis, he throws longer punches, because he's not defensively blessed, and because he's facing one of the hardest punchers in the sport, who has one of the best jabs in the sport, and who is better defensively than him, and who has fought 20 guys, knocked out 20 guys. I believe Virgil Ortiz continues that pattern and gets the stoppage here. I'm going to call a stoppage here, right, in part two, because Ortiz understands he's being measured against the best. Right, Delorme has been stopped three times. You might remember Luis Carlos Abreu, very good knockout puncher. Of course, we know Jaron Ennis, and we know Terrence Crawford. Right? I believe Ortiz is competing with Ennis and Crawford. <laughs> if they got knockouts, I believe Ortiz is going to go for the knockout. Let me also point to that Ortiz is a spectacular body puncher, right? As you watch his jab, which does stand out, right? This is like watching Sonny Liston, who had a spectacular jab. George Foreman had a spectacular jab. This is that kind of jab where the guy can throw it in the pocket, and if he's landing it flush, he does not have to hit you with anything else. Right? It's more of a stationary jab than it is an Ali, Larry Holmes, Tyson Fury mobile jab. Right? Just understand, as you look at the jab, realize that Ortiz is a hellacious body puncher. So if Ortiz starts going to the body on Delorme, right? even though body punches are hard to read, I'll be surprised if Delorme is able to take the body attack. I'm expecting a stoppage well inside of the distance. If you're looking for talent, look at Virgil Ortiz. Right? This is one of the most talented young fighters in the game. Let's just say that there is a huge weight gap now between Ortiz at 154 and Ryan Garcia at 143. But if they were to fight, right, and let's say weight didn't matter, just off the styles, the fact that Ortiz is much better defensively than Ryan Garcia, the fact that it wouldn't be an amateur fight, you actually have to last 10 to 12 rounds in the pros, right? And just given the way Ortiz puts his punches together, I would take Ortiz in that fight. That's how good I think he is. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.